All right, Johnny, what are we talking about today? Here we go. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit. You know, I talk a lot. In my interviews, I talk a lot about being down here in Los Angeles, you know me running around the hood, running around here in downtown LA, you know, different parts of LA, but I've never shared, you know, uh, when I went out of state, you know what I mean? When I was about 15 years old, this must have been, ooh, man, I say 87, 88, maybe. I was about 15 years old and it was getting hot down here, you know, uh, the Texas kept coming to the house, you know what I mean? And, uh, he kept raiding the house for my uncle, he kept raiding the house for my brother, you know, so it was becoming too hot at the house, you know? Every time they raided it, they'd just take me to jail, let me out in a few hours, but I didn't like the feeling. So, you know, I got to my grandmother, I told her, you know, I want to go to, uh, to Mexico, you know? And she said, I already sent you over there, you know what I mean? I already went over there, I wanted to go back, but she didn't want to send me. So she said, well, I want to stay in Arizona for a little while, you know, with some people up there. And I was like, all right, let's check it out. You know what I mean? Let's go, you know, it was, the summer was gone, so I was figuring it's not that hot. Still, I got there and it was fucking boiling hot. And we're in the middle of October. It, like right now, and it was boiling hot. You know, I, I got there and, um, you know, the school year was passing and I wanted to get enrolled in school because I just didn't want to run around there, have the cops or the tune officer catch me because remember, I went there by myself. Lo and behold, I, I, what I did was I got some money together, I got my clothes together and I went to, to the bus depot, not this one, the old bus depot, the one that used to be on 7th and Maple. Um, yeah, right there on 7th and Maple, the old bus depot. So I went over there. You know, and I remember when I got there, you know, uh, uh, some fool snatched my luggage real fast, man. And I thought he was trying to steal my shit. So I gave chase to him and he's like, hey, hey, I'm just helping you out. You know, I didn't know that those dudes would help you take your luggage, you know, wherever it got to go and, you know, break them off, whatever, change or dollars. I thought he was robbing me. You know, I'm young, 15. He's grabbing my suitcases. He's a grown man. I'm like, man, I get at him. He, anyways, I gave him some change. I get on the bus. So on the way, on the way to Arizona, we're like halfway there and all of a sudden, the bus pulls over to the side of the road. And then I see sirens, you know, flashing in the windows. And I'm like, oh, shit. They pull over the fucking bus. Oh, man, I hope they didn't fucking see me or, you know, they're looking for me. So I'm thinking it's all about me. Nah, I got on the bus and took this man and this little kid off and took them both, you know. So I, it was cool, but I was already busting out my, my pictures that I took, you know what I mean, in L.A. and stuff just in case, you know, because I don't got no ID, you know what I mean. And a lot of times right there in that part of... Uh, of the trip to Arizona, they deport people. You know, that's by Coachella, Indio, all that area. They deport a lot of people, you know what I mean? And they catch you on the bus by yourself, no ID, nothing, no one with you. Of course they're gonna take you, you know what I mean? Well, they bypassed me, cool. I went all the way to Arizona. When I got there, I got there, it was about, it was late at night. So I went, you know what I mean? Went in the backyard, kicked it. They got a nice spot out there, kicked in the backyard, waited till the next day. Next day came, I was like, okay, what am I gonna do over here? You know, I, I couldn't sell drugs, you know what I mean? Out of my grandma's house, I could just run wild right here. Or I couldn't enroll in school and see what that's like, you know? I'm only 15, so I got at one of my aunts and I'm like, hey, can you enroll me in school? She didn't want to do it, so my cousin, she ended up doing it. They enrolled me in school, put my grandmother's address. Now I'm going to school, right? I'm going to school up there and you know, it, it's, it's, it's similar to back home, but it's just a lot slower, you know what I mean? They ain't doing as much shit. They're doing it on the low, but they're not doing as much shit as we're doing back in LA. You know, they're, they're about three gears back, you know? But uh, one time I'm kicking it, you know what I mean? And I was watching this dude, you know, he was Mexican and Puerto Rican. He lived across the street from me. And um, I always used to see him leaving at night, coming back at night, you know, and I'm wondering, what the fuck is this dude up to, you know? So one time he walks by, I call him, and we smoke a cigarette, we get to know each other. Lo and behold, I know this dude's a, a robber, you know, he, he robs all kinds of shit, you know what I mean? And, I'm down there with him and I'm saying, let's fuck it, let's go. Let's, let's go for a world, you know, see what's up. He goes, well, I'll be back right now. I gotta go get something. So he leaves, he comes back. When he comes back, he has this, this, this. I, I gotta be that here, a Ford truck, big one, king cab, a long bed. I'm talking about high ass truck and bad motherfucker. Four wheel drive, everything, right? Looks brand new. So I'm like, where'd you get this truck at? He's like, man, I just went to the car lot. Got inside the office, man, opened the shit, all the keys were hanging. I grabbed the key, got in it, and took off. I'm like, yeah, but there's poles and chains. He goes, nah, man, he goes, I'll show you. He took me over there and a trip because all those par all those used car lots always have one pole that comes up and then you can lay it on the ground and that lays the chain out. You know, I never knew that. I never knew that till he showed me. So we went over there, but we took the pole out, laid it down, we went inside the office, he went inside, pulled all the keys out, we're all looking at the keys. And boom, I see this nice ass uh, uh, Trans Am. I'm like, I wanna take the Trans Am. It's blocked in, so I'm like, okay, I gotta move the white truck, you know? And what it is is, 
it's just a, a, a you know a set like this a set which is a gang of keys in there and they all have what year what color what model so you know you just look at the car lot get the key and boom presto you know you got the car so we ended up getting about three or four that night now we're cruising around and we're wondering where are we going to take them where are we going to take them so i said well you know what we could wait till the morning and then we could drive to mexico you know what i mean and mexico is only 13 miles so i figured the worst that can happen is we got to walk back you know what i mean that's the worst that can happen so we go there's about five of us we go in about three cars we go there, a truck and two cars we go over there we meet some dude we met on this side over here he's talking about his aunts and everything live right there and he they did and they want to buy all the cars as soon as we get there so we got there and uh, we stayed a little while we went and party with dude we went deeper in into mexico we went through um the border of called algodones it's um, in between San Luis, Mexico, and Chicali, like that. Yeah, Mexicali or one of those. It's right in the middle. It's, it's little ass border. Got like one car goes in, one car goes out. Small ass border by the canyons. You got to drive along the Colorado to get there. You know what I mean? It, it's it's a small ass border. So we get there, and we roll through like nothing. Boom, we roll through. And first, when we get there, dude's like, "Come on, let's go to the bar." You know? And I didn't know that. You know, you can be any age to drink in Mexico. You just gotta act right, you know what I mean? If you act the fool, you're gonna take you to jail, you're fucked. But if you act right, you know, you can have women sitting on your lap. I had a woman sitting on my lap, I was 15, you know what I mean? I was buying rounds, buying rounds, cause you know, over there, like 20 bucks, man, I'll buy you like fucking, like seven rounds in the bar, you know, with everybody there. So we're buying shit, we're buying shit. My uncle walks in, boom. My grandfather's brother, I'm thinking, oh shit, man. I'm through with money, this who's gonna tell? Nah. He said, what's up, how you doing, man? Grabbed himself two broads, sat him on his lap, and started partying, and I was like, okay, this boy ain't gonna tell me. So we went over there and we have, okay, the dude told us that we we're gonna get 2,500 a truck and 2,000 a car. Nah, you know, when you get somewhere, everybody, always in the deal when you get somewhere, a motherfucker wants to change it up. We're in Mexico, what could we say? You know what I mean? He's trying to shortchange us like 2,000, but what could we say, we're in Mexico? You know what I mean? Once we, over here, we got no backing. You know, I'm all the way in LA. We're right in Arizona, that's 30 miles away. So I'm like, damn, this food's gonna get us, fuck it. We told him, yeah, yeah, whatever. So we got it. We put the money in our pockets. Now remember, we're there all day. What happened was we lost track of time. The border closes at eight o'clock exactly. It's like 10 to eight. So we're like, fuck, we got no chance to get in the car, nothing, we gotta run. So we run, man, we run. We get there, it's like five minutes to close. We get there, we go through, boom, 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 with all the money. Now we're stuck and we got 30 miles to walk along the Colorado. And 30 miles is a long time when you ain't got no water. It's a fucking far ass hike. Believe me, I did it. And we did it because we had no ride, nothing. Um, a little ways there, this old man in his RV and his wife pulled over to the side, gave us some water and, and told us we could hang on it, hang on his RV and get a ride to the RV place. And that's like halfway. So we drank water, whatever we get on his RV and we're all hanging on and he gives us a ride all the way over there. So we're halfway through our trip. We're like maybe eight miles into it. And I mean, this is sick and it's cold, man. My legs are burning, you know what I mean? And constantly thirsty, you know, and, and it's fucking hot over there, you know what I mean? But when you're in Arizona and you're there for a while, you become accustomed to the heat, like anywhere else, you know what I mean? But the heat is so hot where you, man, I used to see my little cousins walking barefooted on a cement and it's like 115 degrees, you know what I mean? I used to be like, man, they, their feet must be fucking hard or something because it's really hot out here and they're walking like nothing. But being that they live there all their life, I guess they came accustomed to that heat. You know, I try to put my foot down on the cement. Hell no. You feel like you could fry an egg on that fucking cement, you know, and they're walking all the way to the market barefooted, you know what I mean? And that's pavement, sidewalk, rocks, everything. It ain't phasing them, you know? So, you know, when I was in Arizona, we, we kind of got used to the heat. So that was, that, was, that was a little up from us walking. But we're about maybe a quarter of a mile still, a quarter of a way to go still. And I'm thinking, damn, we ain't gonna make it, man. This shit's too fucking hot, man. Here comes one of the fellas, man. He came from the school, he went to the border, seen he was closed, came back around, seen us walking, went all the way down, turned around, came in and picked us up. You know what I'm saying? He picked us up. Dude was only 13 years old, you know what I'm saying? I gave him his props, he was only 13, he came for us. You know, no one asked him, no one told him shit. You know what I mean? He air hustled us, our conversation, that's how he found out where we were going. He wanted to go, he went and got a car and everything so he could go and he was only 13. But when he came with the car, you know, we're relieved. We're like, man, fuck, we each gave him, you know what I mean, a couple hundred dollars each, you know, cause he came to pick us up in the middle of nowhere, you know? So we get back over there and, and, and you know, you got, over there in Arizona, you gotta understand that, that they're not 
as quick as us. They're not so adapt to cars getting stolen. You know what I'm saying? If something happens big, comes out in the paper, everybody's talking about it. Now there's cars coming up missing from those car lots like four or five every other night. We're taking them. We're just taking them. You know, taking them. No, there's, oh shit. Oh, there, there must be 20, 30 car lots. You know what I mean? And they're all the same. It's all the same build. They're built all the same way. You know, I don't understand. That's not really a, a burglary proof, you know, but being that we're over there and it's a lot slower, maybe they're not too hip to locking that shit behind something where you can't get in, you know what I mean? And they didn't do it. So everywhere we went, man, everywhere we went, and I went, I, they opened the front door, I looked in, boom, whole set of keys, man. Everywhere we went, you know, and we did that, we did that, and, you know, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, I was on a whole different page with those dudes. There was no gang, gang, gang banging involved. I didn't have no enemies over there. I mean, there was dudes from hoods over there. You know, and they were from LA hoods, but they moved to Arizona. They started claiming Arizona. You know, those dudes didn't say shit. It was more the dudes that came from LA and went over there and, and like, you know, transplanted over there. And now they feel like they're running something, you know? So we got shit with them a couple of times, you know, in front of the school, down in their hood, you know? But other than that, it was cool. You know, I didn't have to worry about walking down the street over there and, and getting shot in the back. You know what I mean? I got to look over my shoulder, you know? Right there, you can drink beer, you know what I mean? The cops don't really sweat shit, you know what I mean? Like they sweat shit in LA, you know? And I was really comfortable over there, you know what I mean? I was thinking, man, I might just stay here, you know what I mean? And get a girlfriend, you know what I mean? And, you know, raise a family and just kick it. But nah, it, it ain't happening. You know, it ain't happening about shit. Three weeks into my stay, phone call comes from the hood. You know what I mean? Hey, you gotta come back, you know what I mean? My little brother got out, he's running amok, you know what I mean? And I don't want him out there by himself. So I'm like, damn, how am I gonna get back home? You know what I mean, how am I gonna get back home? I'm thinking the ground, that's too fucking long, man. That shit is too long, you know now. I had some money on me from the cars, you know, so I got it, one of the neighbors, a white boy right there, and I was like, hey man, let's go to LA, you know? I'll take you over there with me, we'll kick it, you know what I mean? You know a lot of my family will go over there and post up. He's like, man, it's a good idea, let's do it. So fuck it, we loaded his car, we got in his car and we drove all the way. Halfway there, his shit broke down. In the middle of nowhere, I'm talking about, just fucking mountains and fucking bushes. Nothing, you know what I mean, nothing. Nobody's stopping, nobody's stopping. All of a sudden, here comes the highway patrol. That fool stopped, helped us, we fixed the car and we got on, you know. Out of everybody, he stopped the highway patrol. No one else was stopping, man. Motherfuckers were flying by. You know what I mean, I'm trying to tell him, wait, you know, fuck, help us out. Nobody, nobody, and it's fucking hot. We're in the middle of the fucking desert. We're like about, 10 miles from Glamis, that's the fucking sand dunes, you know, over there in that area, you know, it's the sand dunes, and we're fucking just, we're stranded, man. Well, he helps us out, we get to a, a gas station, we call some heads, they, they come and get us, but we're, you know, we're halfway there, and, uh, you know, when they came and got us, you know, we, we had some stuff we brought from over there, because, you know, in Arizona, you know, you can do certain things you can't do in California, you know, you can acquire certain things, you can't acquire... In California, you could acquire them in Arizona. It's a different law, you know. I seen an old man walk into the store, and he had two Colt 45 pistols on his lap, you know, with a gang of bullets like that, you know. And he was maybe like, he had to be at least 70, 80, you know what I mean? He had his two guns right there, and he was walking down the street like nothing. And I was like, how the fuck could he walk down, you know what I mean, with his guns like that? I said, no, he ain't no cop. It's kind of old to be a cop. So I asked the man at the store, I'm like, yeah, how's that guy just coming here with guns? He's like, well, that Arizona law, you can brandish firearms on your hips. You know, you can have a firearm on your hip as long as it's visible and, you know, you're showing it. You can have that. I didn't know that, you know. And then little by little, I started seeing more people strapped up, strapped up. I seen this dude had a fucking belt buckle like this and it had a little ass gun with like four bullets in it. And it was his belt buckle. That shot 22, his little ass, little ass gun on his power book. You just push a button, that shit fall right in your hand. I seen that one, that was right after I seen that man with the, with the Colt 45s, because now I was interested, you know what I mean? Damn, over in Arizona, you could just buy them over the counter, like, fuck, we ain't getting close over there. So I do my thing, you know, and they handle their business. Like I was saying, we got halfway there, and that's what we're really concerned about. When the high patrol came, we weren't really tripping because he's by himself, and he was gonna look through the car, he had to look really good where our hiding place was at, you know, because we made a hiding place where it, it's even hard for us to fucking find it, you know what I mean? So we made it, you know, we got, we get back to LA, and as soon as we get back back to LA, my little brother, he's in jail. I'm like, what was he in jail for? Oh, he got busted for a shooting last night. I said, I told him I called, I was coming the next day, but he couldn't wait. You know, he was fresh out of jail, you know what I mean? And when you're fresh out of jail, you know, you got all that animosity build up, 
all those fucking rumors you hear about your girlfriend, you know what I mean, about your homies. So you want to get out there and smash everybody, you know what I mean? But I honestly, to tell you the truth, there's not enough time to smash everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody ain't worth it, you know? Not all ass whoopings are good, you know? You might whoop a fool's ass and, you know, he's gonna call the cops, you know? That, that, that's what I'm really concerned about these days. That, you know, over there when I was in Arizona, you know, they called the cops to me for beating up a dude and they just came, broke us up and left. Over here, I got a uh, bus for beating up a dude. They arrested me, wanted to give me a and battery and both of us were bleeding. But being that he called, you know what I mean? He called him on me. He said I should have called, but I'm not a cop caller, you know what I'm saying? I, couldn't, I can't do that, you know? It's really hard for me to call any law enforcement because of the fact that I just don't agree with a lot of their tactics, you know, the things they do, you know what I'm saying? I don't agree with them, you know what I mean? And right now they're off the chain, so I don't call them for nothing, you know what I mean? I like to get my camera and watch them because they're always doing some dumb shit, you know what I mean? They're always doing some dumb ass shit. But um, over there in Arizona, you know, right before I left, I got a can of paint and I started sniffing paint. And when I was sniffing paint, I thought my cousin was trying to set me up. So I ended up beating her up. Cops came, arrest me, take me to jail, put me in juvenile hall. And the one thing I remember about that juvenile hall is when you get there, they got this thing called adjustment. For a whole day, you have to sit in your room with your mattress rolled up, with water, food, whatever, but you can't lay down. For a whole day, This and this is in, Arizona Juvenile Hall, you know, they, they don't let you sit down for a whole fucking day. And I didn't understand that, you know, that's like inhumane, you know? You could use the bathroom, you know, but you had to stay sitting there. You couldn't lay down, close your eyes, you know, they'd bang your door, bam, bam, bam. You know what I mean? And I was like, how the fuck does that work, you know? Adjustment for a child, you know what I mean? So, you know, Arizona has its goods and its bads, you know? It, it, Arizona, like you do something, you rob a liquor store, they give you like 27 years, man. But you only be doing like six, seven. But they give you this way out number, like 56 years. Do you see dude out in like five years? You know what I mean? Their laws are different than us. You know what I mean? They, they run their shit different. You know, they're, everything. Their, their IDs look different. They're fucking, everything is, is, is like more like a Western shit that I noticed. They got more like a different heritage back then, you know, behind them, you know? I used to go, oh, we, oh, we used to ditch school. I remember when I was in high school, we used to ditch school, like 15 of us. And we'd go to the Colorado River. It was like three blocks away from the high school. So we'd go and we'd take plastic bags. And when the truant officers and the cops would come, we'd just jump in the water and swim to the other side and get out over there and fuck you. You know, they, they can't come on that side. It's not the jurisdiction. That's California, you know? And so we'd go back and forth, you know what I mean? And fuck with the cops, you know? And the only ones we didn't really fuck with was the, the fucking border patrol because those fools don't give a fuck. They'll go anywhere on any side, you know, in the water and they'll come and get you. They have, believe me. So we were doing that for a while. We we're ditching, and, and because we we're ditching, more and more people were finding out. So I look at like at the dad's ditching party we had there. We must have had like 50, 60 people there, and the cops came and raided, truant officers, everything. A lot of people got in got in trouble, and the whole thing. You know what, what I hated about this situation is when they all got in trouble, all their fingers went <sighs> to me. You know, they all pointed to me. You know, and I kind of figured it because they weren't doing nothing like that over there. They weren't stealing you no know, cars. They weren't fucking jumpy people. They weren't doing that. They, they were just going to school. Their fucking thing was to go to the arcade or, you know, go fucking play in an abandoned building. You know, they, they didn't know nothing about it. Let's go take some cars, drive them over here, and you get thousands in your pockets. So a lot of those dudes that I did that with, you know, a lot of them now are in jail. You know, I talked to a couple of them, you know what I mean? They're still doing their thing, but I kind of feel bad because, you know, I kind of started them off on that bad trail, you know what I mean? But I let them know, you don't gotta come with me, I'll go myself, I'll just come pick you up after with the girls, but no, they wanna go, they wanna take their own car, they wanna look cool, okay, go ahead, you know? So, a few of them I know went to jail behind that, behind fingerprints, because remember, I just got there, so they didn't have me down on file. Those fools, though, they went to jail. Cops came to their house, raided their shit, took all their dad's guns, took their guns, fucking took everything, you know what I mean? And took them to jail, you know? And what was crazy was, they got booked for other shit that I knew nothing about. And it was supposed to be all of us together. So these fools were pulling some slick shit and they got caught up because they pulled slick shit, you know? But, you know, I wanted to show you today about, you know, I'm always talking about here in LA, you know, but it's anywhere you go, you know what I mean? Anywhere you go, if you're part of a certain environment, you're gonna find where those people are. You know, if you wanna get high, you're gonna look so long that you're gonna eventually see someone that's doing the, the, the movement or something of someone who's high. So many places I've been, when I got to Arizona, first dude I asked, hell yeah, he would get everything, you know what I mean? And you know, I've had that happen to me a lot here in LA, you know, 
big truck drivers and shit would pull over and come and get at me and be like, hey man, can you hook me up? I'm all the way from Kentucky. I'm just coming through. This is a stop, you know. And I'm thinking, man, I want to hook this fool up. But damn, once he says, hey man, I'll give you $200 for yourself. I'm like, what the fuck? Just for picking up for him? You're going to give me 200 bucks? And that's not just what he's giving. He's only giving me that from the beginning. This is not when I bring him back to shit and he sees it's a lot. He's happy now. She breaks me off another 40, you know, and then before I leave, another 40. So, you know, fool breaks me off three, four hundred, five hundred dollars and it's happened like maybe seven, eight times right here in Los Angeles. And I'm just walking down the street. I've been approached by women, a man, a man and women, and they're all truck drivers, you know what I mean? And I'm wondering, why would they ask me? You know, what, what, what aura or what do I give off saying that I would know where to find drugs? You know, even if I'm all just walking down the street, I mean, I know they can't see that I'm high and I'm on drugs. They, they can't, but I mean, it's just so bad that, you know, people from another state cruising through stop me to buy them drugs. You know, and I'm like, okay, what do I gotta change? Do I gotta change my attire? Do I gotta change my appearance more? You know, I'm almost 50 years old and I'm tired of youngsters mad dogging me, asking me where I'm from. You know what I mean? And it's like 22 year old, 21 year old kid asking me where I'm from. I'm almost 50 years old. So a lot of times I just wanna bend them over and spank them. But then again, I knew I was like that before. You know, I was at that, at that age, you know? But I wanted to share that with you this time, you know, about it don't matter where you go, man. It's not just here in Los Angeles and Skid Row. It's everywhere. You know, I've been from one tip of California all the way to the other side. And every fucking city has a ghetto, a slum, the hood. You know, I've been places where they got actually got rows and rows of they call slam shacks. They're abandoned houses up on stilts and all the people go in there and slam in there, live in there. You know, there's no landlord, there's no nothing. And it's just rows and rows of empty houses. And it's a trip because I remember when I first went in there, it's a regular house, but it's called a slam shack. And they got like 15 on this side, 10 on that side, five on that side. I've never ever seen it there. Only place I've ever seen it was Madera, California. In Madera, California, they had what they call slam shacks. And they're crazy because everything's in there, syringes, all kinds of shit everywhere, you know? And the cops never go in there. You know what I mean? And I was like, whoa, you know, so every place has a place where you can find trouble. That's what I'm saying, you know? And if you don't go to find trouble, trouble will find you. Trouble always finds me wherever I go. I ended up leaving Arizona because I had to leave. Cops were already on our tail and shit. They were already booking all these fools. So I up and Adams got on, came back here to LA. But I just wanted to share that with you, Mark, you know? I had some good stuff next time, you know? Some better shit.